the world work and where we use the book the government of Eden and this is the world work yeah Joel Goldsmith tape group class um, great thank you so much for being here I want to actually start right away with um, reading something from the chapter that we're doing today and <clears throat> when I say doing the chapter it is more like I use not much of the chapter but the in, yeah the theme being mentioned in it so like today is that uh, healing consciousness now this is chapter 8 and the title of chapter 8 is this when we spread fear rumor hysteria and mass confusion like yeah that's something we don't want to do but let's see what Joel has to say on every hand mankind is gripped by fear in the face of nerve shattering world conditions and those of us who have been able even in a measure to see the unreal nature of the evil rampant in the world have not only the responsibility of releasing people from their fears but in releasing them from their fears preventing the greater tragedy that their fears may bring upon them people do not fear because they are cowards they fear because they are gripped by universal hypnotism that makes them act in ways foreign to their nature it is a mass hysteria having its foundation in ignorance now is that a good description of the world that you see that you find yourself in probably it is like that's yeah that that takes care of it that's a that's a definition of the world that I see if I trust my human ways of limited perception you could say then I I see that there's there's like a mass hypnotism going on but now here we are in the world work it doesn't stop with that it's not the end of the story now it's the beginning of our of our possibilities to to give ourselves away in a whole different way not by increasing the fear but by releasing the fear first within ourselves and followed by setting everyone free from it just by your own example you could say but first releasing my ideas about what I think the world is and what power it has over me now you could already say like that starts uh, your uh, healing consciousness a healing consciousness what is that actually how do you do that where does that where does that originate how, how can I get to that how can it be realized within me now today we we look at that in different ways and one of them is in a poem by Lord Tenere, Tenere, something like this, Lord Tenere. And um, he uses words that Joel uses all the time. That's why I use it. So in this book, The Government of Eden, Joel refers to this book and to this specific poem. So that's something we're going to take a look at and listen to in as our meditation so it's like the idea of closer than God is closer than your breath and then your hands and your feet uh, he wrote a poem where that is yeah com combined in you could say inspired by so that's one thing and the other part is is a tape that we're going to listen to building healing consciousness now that's an interesting tape um, the first half hour you might have listened to so we're, we're going to listen to the second half hour in which Joel expands on the idea of a healing consciousness see the as with everything in our path developing something is also in fact allowing that in our consciousness but in order for that to be space to receive that needs something else to go so this is what we continuously see you say like yes I want a healing consciousness I would love to be a healing consciousness walking around seeing that people are healed by just my presence that would be so lovely 
Now, but it starts with you allowing that for yourself. Yeah, we know this, Joel says this many times. So this process of allowing it for yourself means also that you um, relinquish, allow a relinquishment to take place. I, I refer to that almost every meeting that I have because that is the essence of it. It's like you, you like to have that, but you might not directly recognize what you're holding on to. And Joel knows this too, so he's repeating over and over and over. In fact, the same thing is like, well, just use all of this. Like use the path, use the books, use the teachings, but as a means to an end, like as a means, as a way to come to something, as um, he compares it to a stream that you're crossing, like you're crossing a stream. On the other side is your free mind, you could say, your, your enlightenment, your light. And on the way, you use all kinds of things to keep afloat on this river that you're crossing. Now, you use books, you use tapes, you use audios, you use videos, you use whatever you do in order to, to come back to an alignment or a centering that is taking place in you to, to stay on the, on the right line to cross over to the, to, the, um, to the other side of the stream F to receive your, your new light, your new horizon, your new yeah, enlightenment. Now this is a great, great way to to take a look at it, and so, in other words, there's no other way to come to the other side and then to be inspired by what is given to you. So, and this is where we come down to many times too. It's like it is about listening. It's about receiving. It's allowing that to come to you, allowing your consciousness to be changed, allowing to have a gentle healing. Yeah come to you, having things be revealed instead of you determining to intellectually get what it says. No, leave that insanity behind, you could say. So this is what we do, this is what we practice, but our doing and our practice is basically, um, you can see it like this if we're talking about a river too. So you come with your backpack, huh, with all kinds of ideas, memories and habits and all this. And like you, you're overloaded with stuff and you're trying to get to the other side. Now you can imagine that that won't work. So in order for you to swim, uh, in the end, you will be, have to become naked, you could say. So you will leave everything behind. You will leave everything behind, all ideas, all patterns, all desires, all this, all that. And suddenly you find yourself being able to swim to the other side, in fact. It's like then it goes quicker. But you can imagine with this huge amount of luggage on your back, uh, you you will go downstream instead of to the other side because uh, it's too much resistance. Uh, it's a beautiful metaphor to use to for this, for awakening, for coming to the realization. And so when you see that you actually didn't have to swim, but there was a cord that you could hold on to, you discovered that too late, many times too late, but now you've discovered there's a cord, there's a guide, literally a guiding line. Um, yeah, a safety line, your lifeline, you could say, which is your inspiration, your spirit guidance. You only have to hold on to that and come back to that and not drop it, not lose it. No, you hold on to that. Now there's something you are allowed to hold on to. That's your lifeline. That is, it is your way to come to the other side in a very loving way, in a very supportive straight line with no meanderings at all, no changes, like no changes in the essential th uh, ways of speaking. So it's like you, you move along that line, uh, literally stepping forward and seeing that you couldn't take anything with you, that was too much, but it was, it was also not useful, so you didn't need it anyway. And suddenly you find yourself on the other side of the river 
and recognizing that you have always stand there looking for others to guide others is like no the lifeline yes the lifeline yes yeah pick up the book here's the book yeah you read it yeah read what it says no don't be blinded by the words but listen to what it says there's a guide in there there's a guide in there so hold on to that hold on to what you listen what you hear not what you make of the words listen to what it says now this is in fact the the guidance that you get all the time but you are the one screaming on the other side to yourself like hey no don't forget to hold the line so i represent this you for a moment in in this moment in time i represent that to you i'm i'm pointing at this lifeline that is guiding you to the other side and it will be successful it is inevitable because you're screaming on the other side with me i know you are so that's why we do this together and we need each other to to not think that there are differences there are no differences no it's just waiting for you to realize that you are on the other side that you are standing that you're the one pointing to yourself the lifeline yes and it's working perfectly no doubt it, it everyone got saved so uh, so did you it's like so did you you are saved from your own insanity or any kind of ha mass hypnotism you're saved of that just listen just listen what you're seeking for is closer to you than breathing and then your hands and your feet that's the occurrence so that's so great so this fits well in with the meditation that we're going to do so i made a visual you can look at it or not it doesn't matter i made a visual of it with the text of this poem and a little later we're going to take a look at the poem because you might ex uh, receive some more inspiration who knows so and we start with that so we listen to that five minutes silence to listen to see like oh yeah let this fall back into the idea of a lifeline and then i repeat it again and then we'll see the higher pantheism the sun the moon the stars the seas the hills and the plains are not these O soul the vision of him who reigns is not the vision he though he be not that which he seems dreams are true while they last and we, do we not live in dreams earth these solid stars this weight of body and limb are they not sign and symbol of thy division from him dark is the world to thee thyself art the reason why for is he not all but thou that has power to feel I am I glory about thee without thee and thou fulfillest thy doom making in broken gleams and stifled splendor and gloom speak to him thou for he hears and spirit with spirit can meet Closer is he than breathing, and nearer than hands and feet. God is law, say the wise, O soul, and let us rejoice. For if he thunder by law, the thunder is yet his voice. Law is God, say some, no God is at all, says the fool. For all we have power to see, a straight staff bent in the pool and the ear of man cannot hear and the eye of man cannot see but if we could see and hear this vision 
were it not he? Le soleil, la lune, les étoiles, les mers, les collines et les plantes ne sont-elles pas, ô âme, la vision de celui qui règne La vision n'est-elle pas lui, bien qu'il ne soit pas ce qu'il paraît être Les rêves sont vrais tant qu'ils durent. Et ne vivons-nous pas dans les rêves La terre, ses étoiles solides, le poids de ce corps et de ses membres, ne sont-ils pas le signe et le symbole de ta séparation d'avec lui Le monde est obscur pour toi. Toi-même, tu en es la raison, car n'est-il pas tout sauf toi qui a le pouvoir de sentir « Je suis je » Gloire à toi, sans toi, et tu as accompli ton destin faisant de lui des lueurs brisées, une splendeur et une obscurité étouffées. Parle-lui, car il entend et l'esprit peut rencontrer l'esprit. Il est plus près de toi que ton propre souffle, plus proche que les mains et les pieds même. Dieu est loi, disent les sages. Ô oh, âme, réjouissons-nous, car s'il tonne par la loi, le tonnerre n'en est pas moins sa voix. La loi est Dieu, disent certains. Pas de Dieu du tout, disent l'insensé, car tout ce que nous pouvons voir, c'est un bâton droit plié dans un bassin. Et l'oreille de l'homme ne peut pas entendre et son œil ne peut pas voir. Mais si nous pouvions voir et entendre, cette vision ne serait-elle pas lui All right. Thank you. Thank you for being with me in this contemplation, what it really is, like it's a contemplation. And suddenly you lost, you lose track of time. And did that happen to you too during the meditation? It's like, whew, no idea how long that was. Um, I always love that. Beautiful quiet that is given us and you lose track of time for just a moment. You seem to be out of everything. Like this is really great and beautiful. So that's suddenly holding this lifeline. It's very quiet. It's very inspired. And um, so the um, the poem that we used here came from the um, government of Eden from Joel. Joel uses this line many times, uh, like closer to uh, closer than breathing and closer than hands and feet that that is a beautiful say way of saying how close god is but then <clears throat> still it is about the experience eh? receiving that experience for yourself and um here is where we where we start off today again too um so i'm using some of the book i actually have four questions that i love to share and some of them will really be like an action, an action question. Now, for instance, this, and I'll start with that because it's, um, I'll start with the question. So the question is um, to you then. It's like, okay, so we know about this world. Huh? This world is, is like uh, mesmerism is full of uh, hyp hypnotism, mass hypnotism, like total insanity at times. And here, here are some some activities that are going on. In basically, a lot of um, the citizens of planet Earth are wondering who is going to be the president of the United States. Now, I can, I can 
I make a talk about that, but that's not what I'm going to do. It's like, okay, how much time did you spend today or yesterday or last week? How much time did you spend in actually realizing your function in what is occurring huh? from from out of you? It's like uh, standing on the other side of the rivers, reminding everyone of the lifeline and yourself, of course. So how much time did you spend doing that? Instead of looking at who is going to be the president, as if, as if that is going to determine how peace uh, is established on Earth. That's not going to do it. So what world uh, are you extending? What light are you bringing into this world is really the question. It's like, how much light do you bring into this world um, in whatever way you can? How much time do you spend doing so? Realizing that um, I and my Father are one. Realizing that um, my peace I give unto you. Like blessing every place that I come into. Realizing that I'm that light of the world. I'm the only one that can bring light into this world. It does not depend on who I vote for. It does not depend on anything else. It just depends on what do I see as my source of safety and of, uh, yeah, of joy, in fact. What is that? Am I losing myself in the outer world, thinking that there are powers that are... Uh, powers over me? Am I confirming that idea? Or am I stepping back and listening and realizing that if there's any a light to come into this world, it has to come from me. Because I, I know that like I'm an instrument of God extending that into this world. Well, that was in fact the question. It's like, why should we not take at least five or ten minutes every day to realize Christ's government on the face of the earth? Why should we not take at least five to ten minutes every day to realize Christ's government on the face of the earth? You could say like, okay, you are voted, you are voted the light of the world. Now you take time to to bring that into this world, to extend that. Okay, so who would ever voice fear or preach fear who had the inner awareness of an eminent God, of a God closer than breathing and nearer than hands and feet? Who would ever voice fear to preach fear who had the inner awareness of an eminent God of a God closer than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. Now, see, this this is something great too. It's like that um, has an that has an incredible impact. Of course, it's like even even preaching fear. You see this everywhere in the world. Like even preaching fear. Like if that one is going to be the president, the president, or that one is going to be the president, you better watch out. Like even if you have the best idea about how things should go, but you teach fear for the other guy, what are you doing? You're still uh, teaching fear. So bring it all back to yourself. Like there's no other way than dealing with this to bring it back to yourself, taking responsibility in fact. Like before I speak, I, I will wait for inspiration to speak. I will feel first my connection with my source before I do anything. If that is inspired, what comes out, I'm, uh, that it happens by itself. I don't need to formulate. I need, don't need to make it. No, it will just be inspired. It will be given. See, this, this is at this time and space that we're in, in terms of awakening process, something that you should really consider of course and you do that i know you do that it's like here's the world work in action it's an it's an action and the action is not to behave like a human being 
but behaving like the true you and the true you can only talk through you if you give space for that because if your mind is still filled with fear about whatever is going to happen out there then this has no chance this has absolutely no chance so it's like that's not gonna work together I can tell you that and of course Joel tells you that too so here we are in our world changing moment in time and who's going to bring about that change you are with seeing this world completely differently and differently in the sense of this world is not uh, a power in itself no God is the only power is the only potence like uh, it has all the power it does not have an opposing power it is absolute power and it has nothing to do with the child's play that you might see happening in on this face of the globe so it's like that is in no perspective that is no way to be compared with the power that is within you that could move mountains easily so you changing you allowing that your mind to be changed you could say to to let it flow out of you is the only requirement that will bring people so to speak of you it brings you to the lifeline helping you to the other side coming to full recognition it's like is it actually true God is it's actually true there's no opposite to love that's amazing yes my peace I give unto you because I I have nothing else to give and not that I want to withhold it from anyone but there's also nothing else to give the rest it does not exist it has no reality so this this is what is happening to you in you in your world in your experience of the world so there's a total shift occurring you allowing yourself to be connected remembering that you're connected with source and letting that do the work for you do the all the world world work for you so let's see if there's another question would you ever fear what mortal who would ever fear what mortal man can do to me and that's uh, psalm 118 who would ever fear what mortal man can do to me who would ever fear? you do fear that of course otherwise you would not be here it's like you do fear that you do fear what mortal man can do to you that's why you're maybe even worked up about the elections or the outcome of the elections the elections itself is fine but uh, like this so here it is like who would fear mortal man and a nothing idea with no mind um, represented by no minds with no mind ideas like with complete ignorance as the basis um, how could that be a threat if you say carry within you all the power in the universe extending its love through you into this world it's like you gotta see it right you gotta see it right you gotta feel that you gotta get in touch with that you gotta feel it uh, in order for it, your your own confidence that it is there you, hmm? so it's like that goes step by step you don't believe it first suddenly you see it at work and you never have a doubt about it anymore but then it grows too and you just want to give more you want to extend yourself you want to make that your say your one goal your one purpose and you feel totally protected by it it's the only place it's the only place where you can feel safe in this moment in this present moment God is loving you without exception giving you everything exactly before you even have a need it is already given 
but you will have to stand still in order and to listen in order to receive that otherwise you miss it you get lost in the past or the future or in the visions that come with this imagery that you call this world so it's like all these things are really coming down to right here right now practicing the presence as Joel says like practicing the presence everything is given out it's perfect it's whole it's creation itself at work God speaks through you spirit is huh? guiding you offering you this lifeline every moment so you can ask where can I find the lifeline I lost it well, what am I supposed to do here to get to the other side what am I what steps do I need to take how am I supposed to look at this I will have to ask I I hold this lifeline but what is the next step you know like this so this beautiful communication that goes hand in hand with spirit um, is helping you to the other side um, so who would fear mortal man no, not anymore right no need no need anymore or what mortal power can do to me once they attain the realization of an actual God what could mortal power do to me once you have attained the realization of an actual God once you are touched by the Christ once you experience light like what um, once you have experienced light you know there is something there you have proof so to speak and this will inspire you to to more of that like yeah invite it in like who would fear mortal man who would fear mortal power um, recognizing that it seems to be outside of you what could possibly be the power of that like it really does not exist it just impresses like it looks like a power but it's a lie that's all it's just a lie it's a fake you could say and <laughs> the ones that are speaking on the stages are talking a lot about fake it's like it is one big fake of course they have no power they know that that's why they scream so hard that's why they have to do nasty things and do completely insane steps in order to prove their identity like why would that be necessary if it's already given and it's complete and whole and perfect why not just uh, allow that to fall into place so apparently you have something to hide and and that is your misidentification how could you possibly be ha um, having power uh, if I see that and look right through it how could that possibly be a power if it is based on ignorance there's just no way of doing that so um, it doesn't take away your love for everyone involved no absolutely not and it's not rejection no it's a total inclusion it's a total inclusion but also seeing where it's based on and seeing that that has no power so it can never be a threat now bringing that back to yourself is like um, what a gift it is that that is given in fact in what we discover as the pearls of the infinite way or the most beautiful expressions that Joel comes with the comparisons he makes the, the metaphors he uses in order to express to you forget about this world you're not of this world no like either choice would not have any effect at all because everything will come from you that will change the world because it had to do with how you looked at it if you take any of this real then you're afraid if you so it's just purely like a beautiful exercise or lesson you could say to not see that as a reality because it is not it is imagery it is past it's gone it's over like your home in heaven you're on the other side of the river so 
there is nothing to fear. It is accomplished. When Jesus resurrected, you resurrected too. It's like that is accomplished. That is t a done deal. Now we're just looking back at how that how that happened, but it did happen. All right, so it's uh, already time to listen to Joel and see how Joel brings in the idea of building healing consciousness. So this is the second part of the of the tape, and it's it's on Hawaii, I think. Like there's a lot of bird noises in the background, really lovely. If I believe in lack or limitation, I have to open my eyes and see that the hills are filled with cattle. The ocean is filled with fish. The air is filled with birds. The forest is filled with trees. The garden is filled with flowers. God forgive me for accepting a belief of lack or limitation. You may say, oh well, what about money? Just turn your eyes toward Fort Knox <laughs> or the printing presses in San Francisco and Philadelphia and Denver. They are printing more money than you will ever need. So you do not even have to have a lack of money. In other words, you are developing the Christ or healing consciousness when you are abiding in the realization of omnipresent abundance, abundance, omnipresent being, omnipresent harmony. The moment you release God, you begin to live eternally. Loose God and let him know. Loose God and let him go. Say, Father, I have just been clinging to you and clinging to you and trying to get you to do this. But now I am going to let you go. Go ahead, Father. Take care of somebody else who does not know what I have learned. I am all right now. I am living in your world. In proportion as you can release God and let him go, you are in Christ consciousness. In proportion as you can release God and let him go. You remember how we have been talking about living in spirit, living in the Christ, not living in a human world, not having uh, our life dependent on matter, but realizing to what extent we live and move and have our being in spirit, on the spiritual law. Well, this is the point that we are making in this lesson. It is uh, a transition that is made consciously by you when you realize I am not living in the earth earthy. I am living and moving and having my being in spiritual consciousness in and of consciousness, not by might, but by grace. <clears throat> Just go through the New Testament and see if Jesus said, O oh God, heal this person. O oh God, send us food. O oh God, forgive this sinner. Nothing of the kind. He was abiding always in the realization of God's presence and God's government. The government is on his shoulders. When you get that mental attitude, thank you, God, go ahead, have a good time. I am getting along fine. Why? Because I know that God is the same to you as God is to me. I know that God is the same to me as God is to you. I know that it is not bothering God if I am sinning at the moment. He is not changing his law or withholding anything. Probably by my sinning, I am withholding myself from God's grace, but God is not withholding his grace from me. In the same way, if you are sick, do not go shouting around for God. Let him alone. 
Let him be about his business. You cannot get any more out of God's grace or out of God's presence than the sun can fall out of the sky. We are moving in an orbit also, God's orbit, and your taking thought is not going to improve the situation. Your taking thought and praying and treating is not going to make God do anything more or anything less. God is. That is enough to know. Just learn to loose God and let him go. Release God. There are so many people who do not know this. Let them have him for a while. And you rest and relax in the assurance that God would no more let you escape from his orbit than you would knowingly let your child escape from your orbit. As you are working with these truths, you are developing the consciousness, Christ consciousness, healing consciousness. All of these truths are just the raft. You are just using these truths for the development of your consciousness. And when you arrive at the consciousness, which can see how fantastic it would be to believe that you need a God power, then you have arrived at some measure of Christ consciousness. Now you are a healer. But you are a healer without healing. I mean consciously doing anything. Anyone that would come into your presence would be uplifted, healed, reformed, prospered, not because you are doing anything, but because you are abiding. You are abiding in the word. The word is abiding in you. You do not have to direct any treatment to anybody. If you do, you are denying God. Or maybe you are trying to help God a little bit. <clears throat> All of the principles, the healing principles, which are taught in the infinite way, I have learned some from books the most important ones, inward revelation, that I have been proving over these 30 years. They are wonderful rafts on which to build a consciousness. But eventually, when you are actively engaged in healing work, you will not take any of them into treatment with you. Now, of course, do not turn your raft adrift while you are in the middle of the stream. That is not good. You might drown. Wait until you are safely on the shore of being positive of your new and higher consciousness. Hold on to these rafts. I have students who want to know how soon they can be free of me, how soon they can stop reading the books. Well, if they are in a hurry, let them stop today. I do not care when they stop, but I really cannot appreciate it if they stop before they reach the other shore. Do not throw the books away or the tapes or classes or practitioners or teachers or meditation until you are so sure that you are established in divine consciousness that you are proving it. Not because you think you are, that is dangerous, but when your life is testifying to it. Now you might want to ask if I have reached there yet. No, I have not. I still like to have a Bible very close to me, and the Gita, and the Tao. I still want some inspirational literature, and I love to be in the company of those who have attained spiritual consciousness, because I get some of the crumbs from their table. So I have not yet reached the place of throwing over books, not even my own books, True, perhaps I use them less now than 25 years ago, but I still have rafts around. Light ones that I can carry on my back or in my pocket. But when you sit down for serious healing work, do not go believing that you are going to find some truth that is going to be a miracle worker. Do not look for some God power 
Sit down quietly, get at peace, and listen. Speak, Lord, thy servant heareth. I will listen for thy voice. Then when you feel the Spirit upon you, when you feel the warmth or the click or whatever it is that will come, you can be assured healing is going to take place. Sometimes it is an instantaneous healing. Sometimes it is a long drawn out healing. That is not your responsibility. You cannot determine how healings are going to appear or when. There is no way of your knowing. A cancer may disappear in one treatment and a simple cold may disappear in three. Search out the specific healing principles that are in the writings. Practice them over and over and over until you are arriving at a consciousness when you are not fearing disease, when you are not judging and criticizing sin, when you are not fearing lack, when you are not fearing any powers, and when you are not even looking around for God power, when you are just abiding at peace, then you will know that you are attaining more and more of Christ consciousness. We have a question here. Predestination. God could not predestine a child to be a cripple. Neither could God predestine a child to be normal. God is spirit. And if you abide in the truth of one power, you are not going to experience the evil. Every bit of evil you experience is only your acceptance of the belief of two powers. There is no God destination about it or predestination or anything of that nature. It is a universal belief in two powers and you either have it or you have not. Or you either have it completely or you have surrendered a great deal of it. In proportion as you are not accepting two powers in that proportion you are experiencing less and less of the discords but the only predestination that is possible is that we are all predestined to awaken to our spiritual identity every knee must bend Eventually, and it is so ordained and predestined that everyone shall eventually awaken in God's likeness. We, in the present era, and all of the time since what we call the early days, we have been moving through the evolution of consciousness we have been moving to our predestined end which is to awaken as the child of God if it was five six or seven thousand years ago that we lived humanly but as animals almost cannibals you can see the transformation of consciousness that has taken place through all of these centuries until we have arrived finally at the place where even if the world is not yet demonstrating it it is talking about the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man and doing for our neighbor and loving our neighbor as ourselves. So we are getting closer and closer to our predestined end which is to live spiritually in the image and likeness of the Father. Now explain the cause or reason for discord 
for the child that is born crippled, mentally or physically disabled. There is only one cause, the universal belief in two powers. And as long as we entertain this, it is not your belief or mine, remember, it was here before we were born. It will be here after we have left this plane. As long as there is a universal belief in two powers, we are going to demonstrate some measure of good and some measure of evil. In proportion, as we attain this higher consciousness about which we have been speaking, we will experience less and less of the discords, more and more of the harmonies. <clears throat> it is possible in astrology sometimes to become aware of good or evil that is about to happen. Only one reason, one reason, there is a universal belief of good and evil. And there are some people who have the extra faculty of reading the human mind and seeing whether good or evil is on its way to you. And that is all there is to it. However, they could not read that if you did not have the belief of good and evil. Three times psychics have tried to read me and have ended up by declaring you have no human history to see. There is only one reason that up here in my consciousness, I do not abide in my human history. I am not living there. 59 minutes out of every 60 at least, I am in this work, in these books, in this consciousness, in this truth. I am not interested about my past or my future. Therefore, there is none of that up there in my mind for anybody to read. I am not living in the past and I am not living in the future. I have actually seen that neither life nor death can separate me from the love of God. So I am not interested in what date I take my departure because it is not going to change my mode of life. I am going to be right on the spiritual path because the I that I am is incorporeal and spiritual and I do not even need this body for it. I need this body only to get around with here with this teaching work but for my own life I can live upstairs in my consciousness so I know that if this body disappears it will not interfere with my relationship with God all right now how can you find what is going to happen to me in the future when I do not have any future in my consciousness do you see that the more you live in your human history, whether it is something you are proud of or ashamed of, the more you are living in the realm of good or evil, and it is going to be so unto you. The less you live in your human history and forget about your triumphs and forget about your defeats, Forget about the things you ought to be proud of and forget about the things you ought to be ashamed of. They all belong to yesterday's newspaper. Do you know what they call that department of a newspaper that has your past history in it? It is a morgue. That is what it is called in every newspaper establishment in the world where they have the record of how you got into the paper yesterday. It is their morgue. Do you want to live in a morgue? Then stop living in yesterday. This is the development of the Christ consciousness. The Christ consciousness does not talk about who his mother and father were and what they accomplished. The Christ consciousness does not talk about what he hopes for the future. The Christ consciousness goes about living, doing unto others as you would have others do unto you, loving your neighbor as yourself and realizing this. You do not have to go looking for any God to love. Do not waste time that way. Love your neighbor and you will be loving God. For inasmuch as ye have done it unto the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. The only way that you will ever be able to say that you love God is in the evidence that you can give of how you are loving your neighbor as yourself. So you see that the developing of 
the consciousness is dependent on certain specific principles of truth, that is, understanding God as the one and only power, and then not as a power that has to be used or a power that you have to get in touch with. It is a power that is. You have to abide in that truth that the power is, and that is all. Learning to overcome your hate, fear, and love of evil, of any error, of any nature, this is developing the consciousness. Then, in some measure, you begin in small ways, and you will find that little problems like colds or indigestion or something of that nature disappear very quickly when you get still for a moment. Often not in yourself. Often you will have to call for help for yourself while giving most wonderful help to somebody else. That is part of the universal belief that I am not you. Later, when you come to the realization that I am you, then it is just as easy to work for yourself as it is for someone else. But for a long, long time, we need to call upon others. Again, if my experience is any criterion, there are times when I reach out and ask for help. There are times, and more especially in class time, when I am scared pink that I and the Father are going to get separated, and I won't have a message. And then I will say, Emma, give me some help. Bring my God back to me. Then I get peaceful and it is all right. To me, it is sad to witness some students trying to become so absolute. I think some of them would like to be so absolute they would not have to take their daily shower. I have not even gotten absolute enough where I want to miss my meal. However, the goal toward which we are working is exactly that, the realization of our incorporeal nature, the I-ness of me. I, I. You see, you cannot see I. I is closer to me than breathing, nearer than hands and feet. I is the Father within me. I is my incorporeal spiritual selfhood. I is my true, true identity. Ah, but these are only statements, and they are meaningless, except that by living with them, eventually you say, Oh, whereas before I was blind, now I see. Now I feel it. Now I grasp it. Now I know it. In proportion as you know it, you have attained that spiritual consciousness. Therefore, search out in these writings the specific healing principles. Live with them. Work with them. They are your raft or they are your bridge. Work with them and let them develop your consciousness. Do not expect... Do not any more expect to work with them today and to see your consciousness improve tomorrow than you would practice piano for an hour or two today and expect to be a better pianist tomorrow. You would be, but not noticeably so. The top secret is arriving at that state of consciousness where you abide in God. You do not need God, you do not use God, you do not want God, you just abide in the isness of God. God is no longer a power to you that is going to do something for you. God is the power that is maintaining the whole orbit and maintaining us in that orbit. The highest consciousness, that which is called the Christ, is the consciousness that does not use God as a power does not need God as a power that is abiding in the isness of God. God is. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God is about the Father's business. God is functioning. God is evident and manifest on a thousand hills and in all of the seas and skies and in the arts and in the sciences. God is manifest. 
God is. Abide in the isness of God. And then you will not act as if you were separated from God and out chasing God up and down alleys or in mountains or holy temples. The kingdom of God is neither low here nor low there. Do not go any place. The kingdom of God is within you. Abide in me, abide in this word. The kingdom of God is within you. Relax, rest. Then you will find the isness of God. All of this you will find in the infinite way and some of the major principles in the chapter New Horizon of the infinite way. All of these principles you will find throughout all of the books and the booklets. It is just a question of being a student rather than a reader. Search the books for specific principles. When you find them, jot them down and begin to work with them and to live with them. You might ask the question at this point, why do I not write them all in one place? As a matter of fact, the suggestion was made to me this week by mail that I take out all the important healing principles of the infinite way and publish them in one pamphlet so everybody could read them. Okay. I will tell you why you would end up in a ditch. You would be like a student many years ago when I said in class the whole secret of the infinite way for practitioners is in the chapter New Horizon in the infinite way. So she went home and memorized the whole chapter and two weeks later told me she was not healed in spite of the fact that she memorized the whole chapter. You see God is not a formula. You cannot use truth as a formula. I do not want to put all of the healing truths in one place and have somebody read them and say, oh, this is the healing truth, because you would miss the point that there is no this out here. No. As these truths amble through the writings and you find one here and find one there and incorporate it into your consciousness, it becomes the living word. But the minute you put them down with an index and start to memorize them, all you have done is made a formula for yourself. And I can tell you that it is going to be a bridge without a foundation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining and listening to Joel. Um, that's really lovely, great tape. And uh, great to hear some of Hawaii too at the same time. Um, so there's a lot of work to do, apparently. So except for the question I asked you uh, from the book, it's like spent five to ten minutes a day um, establishing God uh, government on Earth by you making that connection with yourself. And Joel says, OK, what are you going to do? You're going to check out the healing principles that are in the books new horizon in the infinite way they're there and you want to find them you want to work with them and of course you have done that you have already seen many of them uh, but still it's a great idea to to activate them in your mind in fact to to know that you need do nothing in order for the the change to occur uh, within you that you see everything for what it is and that you allow Christ's vision to come to you. So, But it does help to um, get clarity in your, in your own purpose. It's like, oh yes, I want to see this different. Like, I want to see this with Christ's vision because that would um, set me free from what I'm seeing now. Uh, this is really lovely. All right, so thank you so much for joining today. Um, uh, we meet next week in the World Work with Chapter 9. And I will send out some, some information and some transcripts for that. So thank you so much for joining today. I'll play some music and we can relax a little bit more. Thank you so much. <laughs>